So you want to 3D print a drone, robot, or some other gadget, but you're not quite sure where to start. Today, let's talk about free CAD programs, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here, and welcome back to Hack 5. Over the last couple of years, a lot of people have asked how I got my start. How did I learn what I know? Uh, what software do I use? What hardware do I use? What tools do I use? and so on and so forth. So I figured it was about time I do a series on how Glitch got to be a maker or hacker or something like that. Now, contrary to popular belief, I don't have any formal background in this. I didn't go to college. I don't have any engineering school experience or formal work experience doing drones, robotics, or design. So the way I do things probably won't be pleasing to a lot of more formally educated individuals, but I've always found a way to make what I'm trying to do work and to get to the end goal that I want to accomplish. And so I'm hoping this series will help a lot of you figure out how to do that as well. You don't need to be a formal engineer or something to design a drone to fly around your backyard, but you might want to do that anyway and learn how to make those mistakes and what you need to do to make it better next time. So today we're going to be actually looking at some CAD programs. So while I did say free CAD programs, and this list does include free CAD, it also includes Fusion 360 on Shape and Open SCAD. Now there are paid options out there, such as SolidWorks, Inventor, and a few others. Uh, and I actually got my start on a f different free one called Autodesk 123D Design. However, the 123D lineup has been discontinued. So we won't be talking about those today. Uh, like I said, I have no experience with the paid programs, and so they might be worth checking out, but I prefer to stick to free open source software and put my money into the actual hardware and parts needed to complete a project. So with that all out of the way, let's get started. So the first program we're going to be looking at is one I've been using since high school. This is Fusion 360, and while technically it's a paid program, you can get it for free at, under a non-commercial license. Uh, that does mean, of course, you can't use it to make money. There are a couple of other caveats with the free tier, and that is you only have 10 editable documents at any point. So if you're like me and you want to work on a bunch of projects at the same time, or well, not at the exact same time, but you know, you make your parts individually and then you assemble them rather than making them all in one document, or that you have multiple ongoing projects you like to switch between, this might be a bit of a deal breaker for you. Also, this software only works on Windows. So... If you're a Linux user, well, I guess it does work on Mac, but if you're a Linux user, as a lot of you are, then this software probably isn't for you. Now, some cool things about it, with the uh, immediate cons and basics out of the way, it is a parametric editor, and what that means is anything you do at any point is changeable at any other point without remaking that part. So let's say this hole is in the wrong place, and this one too. What you can do is move it, or move it or you want to extend this out, you can move it. And as you can see, I'm not reaching up into the toolbar up here to grab any of these tools. I am actually using keybinds. So the keybinds structure, the keybinds they use are very in depth and they do take some time to get used to. But if you've been using the software as long as me, you can work very quickly and iterate very quickly, which is part of the reason I've stuck with it. Beyond that, the software is designed for commercial users so you get a lot of features that you might want in a commercial setting, such as analysis tools. You can see the strength, the yield, when stuff's gonna break. You can do uh, wind tunnel assessments. If you're trying to make something for machining, you can do an accessibility analysis. And what this does, oh, I just drag it away. But what that does is look for any areas you might not be able to get a given tool on a CNC mill in there. Not super useful for 3D printing, but you can also do strength analysis with 3D printed filaments. And that will give you an idea if the arm on your drone, for example, is strong enough. It's a very advanced software with a simple user interface. Everything is very approachable. And oh, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. Down here is a history of all the moves and changes you've made. And ideally, if you have a relatively simple document with just a handful of parts, and it's not been through 80 different iterations, then you can just click this and it will rewind I'll right click this and roll history here. 
it will rewind all of the th changes you've made. So if you made a disastrous change or you deleted something you shouldn't have, getting that back is very simple. It's easier even than a Control Z away. And that's Fusion 360. Uh, this isn't going to be an exhaustive tutorial on any of these softwares. It's just a quick pros and cons list and why I use what I use and why you might choose to use something different. Next up on the list is FreeCAD. Now, this is free as in beer and free as in speech CAD. So let's actually pull up this example. I have used this very little. I have used it, but I'm not an expert. I don't understand a lot of the key binds and stuff. There are key binds, so it still has that going for it. Uh, but it is an open source software. And it's an open source software that focuses more on functionality rather than usability. So if you're in the open source software space, that's probably not a big deal to you. You'll you'll get the learning curve. But as someone who is using Autodesk, got their start in Autodesk 1, 2, 3D design and moved on to Fusion 360, I still haven't quite gotten the learning curve for this software, which is a shame. I really like to. Fusion 360 has been making changes that I am not particularly pleased with, and I would like to find something that is free to use and, of course, works on Linux, which this does. They have Linux and Mac ver versions of it as well. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to understand exactly what I'm doing with this software because I'm still learning a lot about it myself. Uh, however, it is, in theory, you can design anything in this software that you can do in Fusion 360. Now, as far as I'm aware, there isn't the analysis suite that Fusion 360 has. So if you need to do stress analysis or anything like that, then this software is not for you. But if you want something where you can just design a part or a trinket and throw it into a Cura or some other slicer and 3D print it, this might work for you. So be sure to give check it out. Like I said, works on Linux too and is completely free. Next on the list is Onshape. Now you might just notice I have opened a Firefox window. This is a completely web-based CAD program. So in certain ways, it's not as fully featured as something like Fusion 360 or even FreeCAD is. However, this is the canister drone. Some of you might remember this project from a couple of years ago. It was something I'm working on and still am working on. Uh, but I was able to recreate the chassis for it very easily in this software. Now, I also, you might have noticed at the uh, menu there, I also have designed the Glynet Muddy antenna attachment I did the LTE series on. Uh, I designed that in this software as well. Now, what's even cooler is I designed that part on an Android tablet. So that is the great thing about this software. While there is an Android app, it's not very good. If you use it in something like the Samsung browser that doesn't do bad things with your right-click key and actually lets you use your right-click key for the contextual menus you need, like uh, Hide Part or New Sketch or something like that, you can use this on an Android tablet. You do not even need a computer. So while I was doing van life, it was very good because I was able to use a low-power tablet instead of needing a laptop that draws 100 watts or something like that that you would need for a more in-depth tool suite like Fusion 360. Uh, this, of course, will work on Linux or Android or iOS or any device because it runs in a web browser. You could probably get it to run on a toaster, honestly. However, that does come with the caveat that it does not work offline. Just like Fusion 360 does not work offline for an extended period, Onshape does not work offline at all. Obviously, everything's hosted in the cloud. So if you're going to be somewhere with poor internet connectivity or regular dropouts, you might not want to use this software. However, Fusion 360 suffers from internet connectivity-related issues too. So again, FreeCAD is the way to go if you're doing something out in the sticks and for whatever reason don't have software like, you know, living in a van and trying to 3D print things like I was. I will say though, Onshape is a very feature rich CAD program. And again, there is a history of all the items you've done here, of all the actions you've taken, and you can make commentary, uh, you can have multiple people working on a design concurrently. Uh, the one thing to note, with this software is unless, it, 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 while it has a free tier, all of your items are public. If you make something and you don't want someone else to use it, probably don't use this. However, if you're the kind of person that's gonna create something and throw it right up on Thingiverse or GitHub or some of the other sites, then this is probably fine for you. You can even share the items directly from Onshape. And last on our list, this is a fun one. Open SCAD. This is a really interesting software and I've used it a little bit. I do not consider myself well versed in it. However, if I click this button right here, we just rendered a cube, as you can see, a cube, from the code on the left hand side over here. So 
let's say I want to make a change. Let's make the cube that says cube into a cube that says hack five. But remember, the point is, well, pointless. And just like that, I've changed what it says. So if you like making customizable items or you've seen the items on Thingiverse where you can go in and customize them, that was made with OpenSCAD. They rendered the item based on the code. So if you found an item that you wanted to change the name or the lettering on like I just did, that was made in OpenSCAD or a similar language. OpenSCAD is, again, just like FreeCAD, freeze in beer, freeze in speech. You can use it. You can modify the base software, though I don't know why you would. Uh, the code is completely public. It's all accessible. It works on Linux. It works on Apple devices. It obviously works on Windows, as I'm using here. I even believe there have been some derivatives made for Android and iOS. However, I've not messed with those myself. Now, obviously, this comes with quite the learning curve, but if you're more of a programmer instead of someone like me who works in the 3D space already and is used to that concept, this might actually work better for you. Uh, there is a bit of a learning curve, but if you've already had to learn languages like Python or C or something like that, this probably will come pretty naturally to you to pick up. And at that point, you're just telling where vertex vertexes go and how big something is. And as you can see, you can make this all parametric so that you can just change that 60 to an 80 and suddenly the cube gets bigger. Uh, let's say we want the letters to be bigger. You change that to a 70. And uh, letter height, let's change that to an 8. This might actually be too big. Oh, oh, perfect. So, and you can make a lot more complex items than this. However, this is just the easiest example to show you. And that's OpenSCAD. Again, free, free, free. It works offline. You don't need an internet connection or anything of the sort. And this was just a video detailing some of the free programs. There are things out there like SolidWorks, Inventor, and some other very professional pro programs that work on subscription systems or are very expensive, like $2,500 for a year of licensing. However, I assumed most of you interested in getting into the making space aren't looking to spend that kind of money on software and would much rather spend it on parts, materials, resources, tools, and equipment. So we just looked at the free ones today. Now, this was just a basic rundown of the pros and cons. I wasn't intending to give you any full tutorials. However, if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to design a drone in Fusion 360 from the ground up, please leave a comment down below. I might be able to do a series on that. Also, please leave a comment if you have any pros and cons for the softwares I mentioned or any other software that you might recommend to someone looking to get into CAD from a basic no knowledge level. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.